and we start a special series of stories on foreigners who fought for China in its war against the Japanese aggression. Beginning today, we start a special series, six episodes telling the historical accounts of three foreign heroes, all who fought for justice and humanity on the battlefield of Shanghai during the Japanese invasion in the 1930s. We want to give a special thanks to Shanghai Audiovisual Archive, who helped make everything possible by providing historical footage. Now the story of Robert Short, an American pilot who risked everything to fight against invading Japanese warplanes. January 28, 1932. About four months after the Japanese invaded the mainland, bombers started attacking the city of Shanghai. Public places, residential compounds and transportation hubs were targeted and destroyed. The place where I'm now at was the site of the commercial press, China's biggest publisher at the time. It was bombed and burned into ashes, along with nearly 270,000 books and manuscripts in the press library. Before the Japanese invasion, the Chinese government had purchased about 1,500 warplanes from overseas, very close to the number of planes that the Japanese military had prepared for war. However, Chinese pilots lacked experience and were not as well trained as their Japanese counterparts. Aware of their disadvantage, the Chinese Air Force recruited experienced pilots from abroad to act as flight coaches. In 1931, 27-year-old Robert Short, a retired second lieutenant from the U.S. Army Aviation Branch, arrived in Shanghai to work as a pilot for Boeing aircraft. While participating in an air race in Shanghai, a Chinese Air Force officer recognized his skills and recommended he take work as a pilot coach for China's Air Force. Short accepted the honor graciously. However, what he didn't know is that his fate has just taken a turn beyond his wildest dreams. Zhou so Zhiyi was the former director of Literature and History Commission of Wu County in neighboring Jiangsu province. He has been studying Robert Short for more than three decades, using witness testimony, newspapers, and original records. Among Zhou's numerous files and documents about Robert is a record of Short informing his friends that he was politically neutral. His empathy for humanity would not allow him to stand idle to the brutality and the crimes that the Japanese military had imposed on the Chinese people. He and the Japanese military could never stand on the same side. February 19, 1932. Short was given an order to deliver a brand new Boeing P-12E biplane fighter to safety. Shanghai Hongqiao Airport, where the plane was stored, was being attacked by advancing Japanese. The destination was Nanjing, which was at the time China's capital city and had yet to be attacked by advancing Japanese forces. Fearing the worst, Short equipped the plane by fully loading the plane's 2.3-inch machine guns before leaving. His instincts proved true. Just about 20 kilometers away from downtown, over the town of Nanshan, in what is now Shanghai's suburban Jiading district, he spotted three Japanese fighters approaching. The three Japanese warplanes were Kawasaki Ki-61s and were attacking at will, short with furious, and started a dangerously outnumbered dogfight with the three planes. Relying on his excellent flying skills and after 20 minutes of intense maneuvering, short successfully shot down two of the three planes, one being a Japanese commander's plane, the third plane fled from the scene. This wouldn't be Short's last running with Japanese warplanes. Just a few days later, six Japanese planes hovered over Suzhou, readying an attack. 
It was a coincidence that Short passed by and spotted him while flying another Boeing P-12E plane back to Shanghai for business. Terribly outnumbered, Short bravely started fire at the bombers with murderous intent. The dogfight that ensued must have been impossible to imagine. Six planes to one, he was outgunned but unfazed. Something had to be done to stop the bombers. There were a total of three rounds of a tactical dogfighting. During the first two, both short and the Japanese planes were climbing high in order to gain an advantageous position to attack. Short's plane had a stronger horsepower than the Japanese planes, but he failed to hit any on his first two passes. On his third pass, Short changed his tactics. Instead of climbing altitude to gain an advantage, he maneuvered below the plane of Japanese commander, a blind spot where Short was free from attack. Short held his fire until he got as close as 20 meters to the target. Confident in his approach and with a burst of machine gun fire, he hit the leading Japanese bomber, killing the flight commander and injuring the gunner. After their commander was killed, the other Japanese fighters panicked and abandoned their targets. The six planes fled to the southeast, but Short stayed in hot pursuit and started a second fight above the water in Chefang. The six Japanese planes fought back and surrounded Short in an inescapable formation. After 10 minutes of fire exchange, Short was shot down and crashed into the water right there. Willing to give his life to prevent the bombers from unloading their cargo of death, his heroics successfully diverted the bombers from their mission. But eventually he was unable to overcome the mountainous odds against them. Some sources suggest the Japanese bombers were targeting a train station in Suzhou that was full of women and injured Chinese soldiers. Other sources say that the six planes were actually targeting a newly built airport in Chefang. In any case, Short's heroics prevented many people from being killed that day. About three weeks before Short's ultimate sacrifice, he wrote to his mother saying, Don't worry about me, I'll take good care of myself. It was the hero's last letter home.